So I want to talk to you all about a few things that have been going through my mind um, as I travel to Monte Carlo. I'll preface with a couple things um, because you'll ask or you'll say, one, I'm not wearing a bra, so you might see nipples and I don't care, but I, I don't like wearing bras sometimes, so oh well. Um, the other thing you're probably going to ask about my lip, and this one is so yummy. Actually, let me grab it because I have it right there. So this lip is called Craving Amplified. That sounds yum. And it, I don't know how to describe it, but it's awesome. So there's that. My hair is a fro. It started out as an amazing, gorgeous, well-defined braid out. And an hour outside, it morphed into a fro, which is fine, but that's not the intent of what whatever so let's talk about the things that occurred to me as i was traveling to uh, monte carlo once i landed and i was in my hotel room and doing some work you all probably know that recently there were the three different what they're calling terrorist attacks like there was one in france where a man was beheaded and there was one in it was an african country and the name escapes me right now and a lot of people died at this hotel beach resort and then um a mosque was also attacked as well and oh that's a lot <laughs> like when you land and you're in this foreign country it's like it's a lot and um at the same time they're like Russia is trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do. Uh, Greece doesn't know if they're leaving the euro or whatever the hell. And um, some of the funerals were happening for the Charleston funeral or the Charleston shooting um, at the church. And it just, I had on the news channel um, because I didn't understand the other channels in French as I was working. And it's just a lot. Like, yeah, um, I don't even, I don't even know my thoughts on it. Like there's this one part of me just, it shows how temporary it all is. Like at any moment, something could happen. Like you could be on vacation, you could be at church, school, work, the movie theater, um, and whether it's someone who's committing an act of violence or an accident, like earlier this year, I lost friends in a car accident. And I'm just reminded every day how like I could just be gone. Like everything I'm doing, I could just be gone. And it doesn't make me afraid, but it makes me realize that nothing is safe. Like wherever I feel like, okay, I'm good. I got all my shit together. And like nowhere is safe, right? It, everything in life is a risk. And it, it doesn't mean to walk around paranoid or, or to go live in a bubble. It means to make every second count, to make everything matter to make sure that you die empty and by dying empty what i mean is i don't remember where i read it in a book but it's this concept about how like one of the richest places in the world is that um, a graveyard because so many ideas and businesses and all kinds of things died with those people they never got a chance to explore them or develop them and i want to die empty i have like a hundred ideas for books and poetry and events and just so many things in my head that I haven't done yet. And it's like, what am I waiting on? Like, even if they're not completely finished or they're rough around the edges, like, just do it. Like, just die empty. So every day, put out the work, put out the drafts, like, just try it. Uh, I also realize how interesting it is to view American stories um, when you're not in America, because it just seems like, and I don't like talking politics and religion. Well, I do like talking about it when I'm with the person in front of me and we can have a conversation. Um, I don't like sharing my views in public platforms where it can't be a dialogue and I can look someone in the eye. That like a few years ago, there were too many debacles on YouTube and Facebook for that. So I don't really talk about 
politics and religion and stuff. But it's interesting seeing the same stories, but from a, um, a perspective that's not American. Like when I was watching the CNN from here, the when they're telling the stories of like the police brutality or the police shootings or Charleston, they're just very clear about like black people were targeted and they were killed because they were black, right? Whereas when you're in America, we want to talk about transracialism and like can't we all get along and maybe it wasn't that like let's pray on it and it's you know what did they do to get the cops to pull their gun because they weren't completely innocent like there's all this stuff which in some of those questions and things are valid or need to be explored um but it's like we're trying to do everything but say that being black in America is a fucked up situation sometimes. Like there are people out there that want to kill you because you're black. And it, it, it happened in the past. Like it was an issue, slavery and, and the things that happened after slavery. Um, but it's still an issue. Like it, it is still very much an issue. And like the people who walk around the world thinking it's not, or thinking that like we're beyond that, or the fact that like so many people are of mixed race, that we are, we're in this new, like you're fucking kidding yourselves. And, and, and the rest of the world sees it and they're not afraid to say it. Like these people were targeted and killed because they're black. That's the news set here. And in America, we're talking about fucking Rachel, whoever, and like giving her the time of day with her perfect twist out, by the way. Um, and like talking about transracialism and how she's teaching us about culture. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I've, I never like, and I, and sometimes I feel like I'm the crazy one in America, right? This is because, again, I don't share my thoughts as much. And there's. There's some of my thoughts that are a bit radical, even though I haven't shared a radical thought in this video. Some of my thoughts are, I have some unpopular thoughts as well. Like I think when I mentioned when I was testing out this like mobile payment thing about how I have a little bit of conspiracy theory and I showed you some of my books. Um, so uh, in America, like I just am other. Um, and then, and, and I always feel other with my mind in America, right? But then when I travel, I don't feel other with my mind. Like I feel other, like here in Monte Carlo, there's not a lot of black people. And even I don't focus on race, like I could walk into a room and I don't need to see black people, but you notice when you, you notice sometimes. So I feel other in that sense, like one of two black people at the museum or doing the palace tour, um, or I feel other because of my hair or whatever. But in America, I specifically always feel other because of my thoughts. And I share them in the safety of people that I trust, even if they don't uh, agree with them. But I just always feel other. And then I come, anywhere outside of America and I land and I and I'm not other with my mind like I what am I trying to say like perspective is interesting and some of that perspective like you're not gonna get until you travel like you might find that in America or wherever like your thoughts are what they are and then when you travel they're challenged and and ripped apart and that's good because I'm challenged and ripped apart in America. Or you might find, like, you might feel isolated in one place, and then you travel, and you feel at home. And I, I feel at home, well, that's a topic for another day, but my thoughts feel at home when I travel. I don't feel like the other one, and that's interesting. So it's just, it's, it's interesting being Amer American right now. Um, as you travel.